Hello and welcome to a slightly different video from GP Templates. In this series of videos we're going to look at some more educational topics and I thought I'd start off with my favourite topic of medical statistics. I provisionally aimed this at uh, the RCGP AKT uh, because I've given this lecture or variations of it to several registrar audiences on their GPVTS training programme. Um, but actually for any medical professional wanting to expand their knowledge on medical statistics, uh, I've given this lecture to colleagues who work in A&E and they found it really useful, especially for preparation for exams. So as it's aimed primarily at our budding GPs, I've looked at uh, the MRCGP exam preparation, uh, which I've shown here. It's a really, really good uh, tick list of topics that should be covered uh, whilst preparing for the AKT. Uh, it's done by uh, eMedica and they provide some excellent resources in terms of revision and it's well worth having a look at. Um, I went on their training package, uh, so they run a one-day course which is sort of a covers all the high yield topics and found it really incredibly useful. More importantly, it just put me in the right mindset for the examination rather than anything else. But we'll take a select few of the topics from here and over a series of videos, we'll hopefully cover them all. Also, we strongly recommend this book uh, if you're having trouble going to sleep or like myself, you enjoy this sort of thing. It's really, really useful book uh, that goes through a lot of what we're going to cover today, but in greater detail. It has a whole load of questions through it as well. The frustrating part of this book, though, is as the questions go through the book, they don't give you the answers, which in terms of, if you like, recall is really useful because it makes you think. But actually, if you just want a quick answer and doing quick revision, it can sometimes be a little bit frustrating. So let's begin. Uh, we're not going to cover all of these topics here today, but we'll just start to chip away at them. But by the end of these videos, uh, we shall cover them all. So we're going to talk about different types of average, because for those uninitiated, as soon as they hear average, they think of the mean. Okay, And that is quite simply the sum total of all the values got together and divided by how many they are. Okay, whereas actually there are two others that we need to be very cognizant of and be able to comfortably deal with, especially uh, in our practice. And that's median, which represents the middle point of any value when ranked in order, and that ranking in order is important, hold on to that, and also the mode. Now, the mode or modal group is the most commonly occurring value or group, okay, and that's regardless of where they're ranked. And we'll try and flesh out these details a bit more. So grab a paper and pen if you haven't already got one. Sorry, should have warned you at the beginning of the video. And here we've got a series of numbers just jumbled up in order and they could represent anything, okay? And what I would like you to do using the information is first calculate the mean, okay? Then work out what the modal group is and finally work out the median. So just pause the video here whilst you sort that out and I'll wait for five seconds. Right, you should be back in and have an idea of the answers in front of you. So let's work through the mean first. So to do that, we're going to get the total. So add them all together. Okay, so the total comes to 141. And then we divide it by 22, which works out as 6. So, and hopefully you've all got that answer. So the median and the modal group require a bit of different effort. Median group is the middle value, but for those initiated, there isn't the one. So the nearest is 6 and 7, so you go in between, so it's 6.5. Modal group, again, is the one that occurs most frequently, and in this case, it's the number 2, uh, which occurs four times. And so that is the modal group, or, the, uh, or 2 is the mode. So why is there 3? So 3 sets or three points that we can navigate around gives us accuracy in any data set. And this could be anything. So as a random example away from the medicine, um, you want to be you want to calculate the average workings in a company. Okay, and you want to make sure they're fair and above board um, and in keeping with your policy. It's a small business, uh, so it only employs six people. You take five people who work off the shop floor. Uh, all earning £21,000, okay? So they're all earning the exact same thing. So, okay, it's not an ideal example because their mean, medium, and mode is all the same, 
okay because they you know they're all wearing the average the same the middle values it doesn't shift and likewise the modal group was 21,000 then what happens if the boss walks in so the boss because he's all about fair trade um he earns 100,000 pounds now the mean suddenly shoots up and is skewed away from this because you've now got six people in, okay, that's fine, but the total of all their salaries suddenly shoots up. So it pulls the mean away to £34,000, okay? So, but if you tack in the mode and the median, they both stay the same at £21,000. And this partly is where the beauty of statistics comes in. With the boss, he could then present this data saying, well, my average uh, salary for my employees is £34,000. And he's not wrong. But looking a bit more deeper, the mode and the median have showing a much less favourable picture. And hence the lovely phrase of lies, damn lies and statistics, because you can then start manipulate the data to your own means and ends. And that's why... I always love doing this so that you can stay one step ahead of the curve. So dealing with data, okay, so we uh, range is effectively showing how, what is the difference between the largest and the smallest figure. So for example, going back to the salary example, there was a very small range in the five employees because they're all the same, okay, but think about large data sets, uh, especially when drug trials come involved, you know, they, they may be a great range, okay. That data set then can be split down into quarters, quite simply, and they are labelled as lower quartile, middle quartile, and the upper quartile. What's interesting is that obviously the middle quartile represents the middle value, so as we already know, that will count to be the median. And using this data, that's where you can get the, uh, you can start to draw certain graphs, such being the box and whisker plot, as shown below, okay, uh, which You've got your big box in the middle uh, with your median line through it, which shows your upper and lower quartile, and also you've got your lowest observations and your highest observations as well. Okay, and knowing about the box and whisk plot, that and getting that picture in your mind is a really quick and simple five points of a blank graph, label all of these on it. Okay. Moving on then into what we call a normal distribution. Okay, so we get a standard deviation of how much variation is around the mean. And we'll try and put a bit of meat on the bones because I believe that's just math waffle right there. So no data set is going to be uh, exactly spot on. So you would get random numbers anywhere. To try and calculate how random and how spread they are, i.e. how much difference there is from that average or that mean, um, we do the deviation. Okay, So if there is a small standard deviation, then there is not much difference in the numbers and they're all nicely packed together. Okay, Whereas if they're large standard deviation, then there is a lot of variability in the results. That's useful for us to know, certainly when you're looking for accuracy of data, certainly accuracy, say, of drug trials, okay, or, you know, time something takes effect, to see whether this data is being replicated, okay, or if someone's just highlighting the data that they want to see. We sometimes call a normal distribution a Gaussian distribution, just as a different uh, terminology for it. And this represents when the data forms a beautiful bell-shaped curve that is symmetrical around the mean, i.e. there is an uh, even distribution of variation both above the mean and below it. We show a pretty picture. Huzzah! So there is a formula for standard deviation. I'm not going to cover it in this because you just need to be aware of it rather than know how to actually calculate it. Uh, but as you can see, um, as you get so many points away in terms of standard deviation, one, two, and three, away from the mean, that represents so much percentage of the data set. Okay? So when we start talking about data in terms of 95% uh, and all the confidence intervals, that's what this is alluding to. So as you can see here, two or two or minus two represents approximately 95 uh Point or represent ninety five point four percent of the data underneath that graph. Okay, so it's covering all of that values there. So we use the ninety five percent as an arbitrary line in the sand 
to see if any data value is significant or not, because there is a higher probability that if the data falls above these values or these demarcations, that actually there could be significant variation when compared to the mean value. Okay. So we're going to stop the video there for the time being. I hope that you found this interesting and useful. Please subscribe and like this video and please comment below if you want to see more of this type of video. As I said, it's a new venture out for me just due to uh, not being able to produce the videos uh, from my previous ones that you've seen, but hopefully they'll come back in future. And please subscribe just to see the rest of this statistics sessions. Many thanks.